eternal rock of ages, the King of glory, the Lord of lords, the I am that I am, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. We just bless and exalt your name today because this is a good day. We thank you because it's a day which you have made and you created it so we can rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, Lord, thank you, O oh God, because you have been so faithful. We we'll bless and exalt your name. Hallowed be your name forever and ever and ever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. I want to bless the name of the Lord for you, everyone under the sound of my voice. I want to believe that God is doing a quick work in your life. I want to believe that God is going to begin to show you the mighty things that already started in your life because it will perfect it. It's just a sowing time. You will reap a bountiful harvest. We started our series on creating the supernatural. Why? Because we were born again to live our supernatural life, a natural life that is extraordinary. The reason why we needed to be born again is God needed to take us back to the Garden of Eden where the original plan, the blueprints for us was created. Where Adam and Eve were living in the Garden of Eden and they were covered with God's glory so much so that they could not see that they were naked. And the moment they seen, they fell short of God's glory and they saw they were naked. Not only were they naked, they were afraid. They became, you know, scared. Fear was birth. Not just that, you know, they started the blame game. You know, they, they, they stop, they didn't want to take responsibility. So whenever you see people not taking responsibility, when you hear things like, oh, it's him, it's her, um, it wasn't my fault, I didn't want to do it, if not because. Adam said, it was the woman you created. I was doing well by myself until this creature appeared. And now I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do because of this woman. And the woman said, why are you saying that? It's because of the snake. God gave them an instruction. He knew what he was doing. In the same garden, there was a tree of life that they would have eaten and lived forever. They did not choose that. They chose the one that will make them to know good and evil. Are we not making the same choices today? The Bible says, I said before you today, life and death. Choose life that you may live. And that's why I started the series, Creating the Supernatural. Why? Because that is your default. God made you a spirit. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 82, you are gods. All of you that are children of the Most High, you are gods. You're supposed to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You're supposed to drink deadly things and it shall not hurt you. You're supposed to pick up scorpions and you will be intact. That is your default. And so I began by, you know, letting you see who you are. You are beyond nature and you're able to do stuff that is beyond nature. Even though you're living here on earth, you're going about your business every day, you are, you know, you, you are in a relationship, you have parents, you're doing one thing or the other, even though they look like natural things, God wants to bring the supernatural into them. In the fourth series, I started by telling you that the only way you can do that is in an exchange program, whereby you bring in the supernatural or the spiritual into the natural realm. So God takes that natural realm and baptizes it and makes it supernatural, an exchange program. How do you do that? 
when you begin to do spiritual things or your so-called spiritual things, when you bring them into your natural world and you make it natural, like it becomes normal, natural for you to wake up in the morning and begin to bless the name of the Lord. It becomes a natural thing for you not to complain, but to praise God, to see good things in everything that is happening. It becomes normal for you when people say, how are you doing? You say, I'm doing better than better. Best. I, it cannot be better than this. Today is better than my yesterday. It becomes your default to become optimistic. You begin to be a faith person, someone that works in faith, which is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. You begin to walk in a realm where you know that some days you need to go on a fast and subdue your flesh so that you can receive from the Almighty. This becomes natural to you for you not to curse with your mouth, for you not to be in places that do not glorify God. For you not to put into your body anything. Why? Because you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you can defile the temple of the Holy Ghost. It becomes a default for you to be doing spiritual things as though that's part of your living. You take the word of God every morning. You begin to study to show yourself approved. Spiritual things become the got to things for you. Not something I want to. Not something I should. But it becomes a got to thing. You cannot start your day without bringing in the spiritual into your day because that's who you are. There are things you do, you know that on, like on Sunday or fellowship days, I can't do any other thing other than to be in God's presence. Because the Bible says, when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord, I was glad. It was something I really wanted to do because that is my default. When I was created before I became born again, that was how God created me. And that's the reason the Bible says you need to be born again. For anyone that is born of the flesh is flesh, and anyone that is born of the spirit is spirit. Not just spiritual, but your spirit. You begin to do things the way it is in heaven. The Lord's Prayer says, Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Who is going to bring to pass the will of God here? You and I. How do we do that? I've been talking about the things you need to do. I don't want to go back all the way, you know, to telling you what I talked about in, you know, in the supernatural one, two, and three. I just want to remind you that the last time, supernatural two, I said you have to be born again. Born again is not going to church. Born again is accepting responsibility and saying, God, I'm a sinner. I've not been doing what I'm supposed to do. I want to be born of God. I'm not able to please you by my strength. For by strength shall no man prevail. I want to walk in the spirit. I want to be born of you. So I don't begin to fulfill the loss of the flesh. I need that supernatural power. I want to be subdued into Christ. You go to God and you accept his grace. For he walks in you, both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. You can't please God without God. You need to know that. And so going to church is beautiful because there's something you've got to do. But before you do that, you need to come to a point where you say, I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and personal Savior. Like it happened to Cornelius in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 10. The Bible makes us to understand that Cornelius was a guy that was righteous, he was doing right things. People knew him to, for his good works. And God appeared to him one day and said, Cornelius, even your prayers, I hear them, but there is still something you need to do. You are building a house without a foundation. I need you to be able to stand on a solid ground. I don't want you to just be doing the works of righteousness without you having a right standing with me. And so I want you to send your servants and go bring certain men called Peter, Simon Peter, who is living with some guy that's also called Simon in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 10. 
So it can teach you the way. It can let you know that these things you're doing is good, but there is something that needs to be under the works that you're doing. I know some of you are doing good works. Many people now have no, you know, a, a non-profit organization. People are doing a lot of charitable things. I know you go to church. I know you say kind words, but you know what? Those are beautiful, but you need a foundation. You need to be born again. For except a man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And except you're born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So the class one is for you to be born again. So you can begin to see the kingdom of God. You begin to see those things that God expects you to see here on earth. It's heaven here on earth. You begin to enjoy health. You begin to enjoy godly prosperity. You begin to enjoy even the spirit of discernment. You begin to lay hands on the sick and they recover. You see all those act God begins to work through you but the Bible says there is another step you must be born of the water and of the spirit you must be immersed into the word you must be immersed into the spirit of the Lord so that now you are no longer who you want to be you it's easy enough for you to submit yourself to God at this point you are no longer you know thinking whether I should do this I should not do this and compromise here compromise there you know you you can't do stuff like that again and because of that i have decided i want christians who really want to be christians i don't want to i don't want to pastor people who just want you know the vibe the life the excitement no i want people who say i want to walk in the statutes of God. I want to be a born again Christian. I want to walk in the supernatural. And so we have decided that there will be a day in the month of July, July 17 to be precise, where we will have the baptisms of the Holy Ghost and the water baptism here at Form. Before we do that, there will be classes where we can tell people this is what you're getting yourself into. This is how we're going to do it. And we show you scriptures on what is going on so you know it's a biblical thing. It is not something that we're just making up. It's not like a ritual. It is what God expects us to do. And if you want to be part of it, I recommend you begin to read the book of Acts of Apostles. And so last time we started talking about supernatural three and I said you cannot walk in the supernatural if you're not ready to fight a battle. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You have to know that what you want to do is you want to walk in your default. The enemy will not let you do that. And if you must do that, you must be ready to fight. The Bible says the battles, the battle is the Lord's. You're not the one really fighting. It's just that you need to be present on the battlefield. You need to be willing to fight. God will fight for you, but God has to see your readiness, your determination to fight whatever wants to come against you 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 want to get into your promised land you will need to fight you cannot say i i i just want to stay behind let god do the fighting no in this world we are in you need to fight for anything that you must get you must fight for it and we'll round it up supernatural three with a scripture in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 20 and um, verses 1 to 4 that says when you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you do not be afraid of them I'm saying you need to fight but God is saying even though you're fighting don't be afraid why God is going to be there with you? Don't be scared of that battle. Don't be overwhelmed. It looks overwhelming. There are many things you need to fight. Your, your, your flesh, the addiction, 
the people, your marriage is going through a chaos, your job, your finances, everything that's coming against you, it feels overwhelming. God says, fear not. In the book of Joshua, God said the same thing in the book of chapter Joshua chapter 1 to Joshua. Don't be afraid four times. Fear not. What did he tell Joshua? All you need is this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Only shall you meditate day and night that you might be careful to do all that is written therein. He said, there you will have that good success and you will prosper thereby. Don't be afraid. That's what God is saying in Deuteronomy chapter 20. He says, do not be afraid. The Lord your God is with you. Who brought you up from the land of Egypt? So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. And I said here the last time, I said everyone needs a priest. You need a spiritual leader. You need a pastor. You need someone that constantly speaks into your life, speaks over you. You must be ready, of course, to submit to the unction and to the anointing. So it can work for you. He says, the, the, and he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, and I'm saying to you today, hear me. Today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. And do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you God will fight for you and will go against your enemies to save you I said yeah I said make sure that you are present in that battle for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, Ephesians 6, 12, 18, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. You are not fighting physically. Why? You're not wrestling. It's not your husband that is a problem. It's not your wife that's the problem. It's not your boss that's the problem. It's not the country or the economy that's the problem. It's not the weather that is the problem. You are not wrestling against flesh and blood. And today I want to introduce you to Supernatural 4, which says you need to be cognizant of time and chance. Everything about this world is about timing. Time and chance. The Bible speaking in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes in chapter 9 I'll read verses 10 and 11 and I'm going to read um, an interesting version for you it's a message translation I love message translation so much it says here it says each day is God's gift it's all you get in exchange for the hard work of staying alive every day of your life is a gift from God. Don't mess around with your day. Every day God gives you an opportunity to breathe. Appreciate God for that day. Why? It's all you get in exchange for the hard work of staying alive. Make the most of each one. Whatever turns up, grab it and do it and heartily adapt. This is your last and only chance at it. For there's neither work to do nor thoughts to think in the company of the dead, where you are most certainly headed. This is the chance that you have. Why? Because we are all heading towards the grave. Every day of your life is one more day closer to your grave. Don't take that day for granted. That's what the scripture is saying. And verse 11, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, 
He says, I took another walk around the neighborhood and realized that on this earth as it is, the race is not always to the sweet. The race is not always to someone that knows how to run. Nor the battle to the strong. Nor satisfaction to the wise or bread. Nor riches to the smart. That soul that has understanding. There are a lot of people that have understanding but they're not rich. Nor grace or you can say favor to the learned or to men of skill. It says here, it says, sooner or later, bad luck hits us all. King James Version says, time and chance happens to them all. No one can predict misfortune like a fish that is caught in a cruel net or birds in a trap. So men and women are caught by accidents, evil, and suddenly adapt. You need to understand that in this world that we are in, what you need to be cognizant of is your time and your chance. I call it opportunities. Make sure you grab every opportunity you have in this life, even when you do not need it at that moment. As long as there is life in you, there's nothing else you're doing. Whatever you can do to add to yourself, whatever you can do to equip yourself, do it. Why? Every day of your life is another chance for you. It's a gift in exchange for the fact that you are alive. Take hold of a chance. Why? Because you do not know where sudden calamity is coming from. What you have already achieved will not be taken away from you. Time and chance happen to them all. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10, which happens to be today's Proverbs. He says that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You will face adversity. You will. As long as you're on this earth, as long as gravity exists, there is going to be adversity, uncertain evil. Nobody planned for the COVID. Nobody can plan for, you know, certain terrors that suddenly just befall people. But God is saying here that, you know, if you want to be smart, it's not, it has nothing to do with the fact that you're wise or you're smart or you're swift. Because you can be swift the moment you fall into a trap of the enemy, your sweetness or your smartness will just disappear. Time and chance happen to them all, why there will be a day of adversity. And the Bible says, if you faint on the day of adversity, it means that your strength is small. That is to say, you have not been equipping yourself. I used to tell, you know, people in Nigeria that time, you know, when I was pastoring, hold on to me, squeeze me, everything that I can give to you, take it out of me. Why? Time and chance happen to them all. I always tell them when I call for a meeting, make sure you come. A time will come, I will be too scarce. The word you're hearing, make the best use of it. Write it down. Listen to it over and over and over again. When I used to tell them, I never knew that it was actually going to happen for real. Anytime I sit down on a YouTube and I suddenly see a topic pop up and I feel, oh my God, I might want that topic, I'll quickly go and subscribe. So that even if I don't have a time to listen to it that time, I know I have to go back there to listen. Why? I may not see that channel again or I may not be able or I may not remember that I wanted to listen to something. 
time and chance happening to them all. People pass by you every day. There is something they carry inside that you have a need for. Be sensitive. Be discerning to know the reason why you are where you are today. There is something, there is something that you need to learn from your present state. Time and chance happen to them all. Time and chance. I needed to understand that falling is okay. In the process of trying to achieve what you want to achieve, in the process of being wanted, you no, know, wanting to be a Christian that you want to be, falling may be inevitable. Now, the issue is when you fall and you refuse to stand, then you have failed. Falling is not the problem. Falling and not getting up is failing. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 24 and verse 16, For a righteous man may fall seven times. When the baby is walking, the baby falls and picks up again and starts walking. Everything you learn in this world, there's always a falling time. Telling yourself, oh, I can't do this, is your failing tomb. I remember many years ago, I had an opportunity that I blew so bad. I look back today and I tell myself, why did you do that, Linky? Why? I enrolled in Alliance from saying, and I started the classes. I paid for this class. And I started, it was getting good because I already had a background knowledge in high school. And so it got to a point where they began teaching us something I didn't really know. And I thought to myself, I don't think I can make it. And I fell out on that class. Today when I remember, I'm like, oh goodness. That should have been something I should have held on to. What I told myself that time is that I didn't need it. Because I never knew I would be in a position where I may want to travel or even maybe, you know, begin to speak in French. I know better now. I quickly enrolled in Spanish classes. Because every opportunity that you see, you need to grab it. You never know when you will need it. And you don't want to faint in the days of adversity. You want to be well equipped. Many years ago also, I started you know, swimming classes. And the first time I went in, I thought I was going to die. I got out and said, honestly, I almost died. I told somebody, you won't believe it. I died and came back. And the person asked me, how, how deep was the place? I said, oh, it was like two feet. The pastor laughing. I actually thought I was going to die. But I didn't face those fears. Now, I went back to it. Why? Time and chance happen to them all. I will really never know when it's needed. All of a sudden, I'm thinking, oh God, I need to get people baptized. If I'm afraid of water, how do I do that? Time and chance happen to them all. I lost that chance. Now I am coming back. I am doing everything I need to do now. Now, never tell me, oh, there's a lot, you know, I need to do, uh, you know, so I don't have time. Check yourself and look at your scheduling. What do you do on your, on your, on your, free, on your free day? What do you do with your free time? Time and chance happening to them all. I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, I've learned to make everything I do fun. So I don't run away from it. 
I'm learning a lot of stuff. You know, I want to perfect my piano. I am learning the guitar. Right now, I started learning the Spanish again. I'm going back to French. I am swimming. I'm doing a lot of stuff. I even enrolled in a dance class. I'm not going to, it's not a competition. I'm not competing with anybody. But see, time and chance happen to them all. Every opportunity you have, take a hold of it. Grab it. Anything that you can do to add to yourself. So that when you fall, you are able to rise again because you're well equipped. Remember this if you don't remember anything. Falling is not a problem. F refusing to rise again is the issue. If there have been opportunities that you missed in the past, Simply because you gave yourself a lot of excuses. Maybe you are that person that will say there is a lion on the street. I cannot go out there. Maybe you say, oh my God, I'm too big. Oh, I am too old. I can't do this. This year, I'm clocking 50. I'm achieving much more than I ever did when I was younger. I have more energy in me. I have life in me. I, I get up in the morning. I receive the grace of God. I speak life into myself. I get into the word of God. I study to show myself approved. I get prepared. I go into the gym. I do one thing or the other because I want to live well because I'm a healthy body carries a healthy spirit i begin to listen to motivational you know talks while i am in the kitchen i'm going around why i'm trying to equip myself so that even if i fall i can rise again my life is my life i have refused to make anybody an excuse for not moving forward anyone that stands in my way i take them out if there's any relationship that is keeping me away from my destiny, they can't be there. I have a choice. Friendship is not by force. It is by choice. I choose my friends. They don't choose me. I choose people I want to be around with. I'm not talking about I have congregants, I have clients, those ones God put me in their lives to help them. But there are certain people that when they speak to you, they bring you down. No, you take them out before they take you out. Remember, falling is not an issue. Refusing to rise after you fall, that's where the problem is. Betrayed before pursuing your dreams. That's all I'm saying. Betrayed. Grab onto every opportunity. Betrayed. You know what Jesus told the disciples when he was leaving? He said, Go to Jerusalem and stay there. Don't go out preaching until the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That is to say, get prepared, trained equipped before you go out there if you are not well equipped before you go out there you will run back as a failure get equipped that's why we're saying get born again get baptized in the holy ghost begin to preach make sure you don't forsake the assembling of yourself together come to church it's part of equipping yourself prepare your work in the field proverbs 24 and verse 27 prepare it outside make it fit for yourself in the field and afterwards build your house equip yourself i am equipping myself i am a constant and permanent student i graduate i go back again i graduate i go back again i graduate i go back again i am constantly learning something Equip yourself because I'm not about going down too soon. No. I've come to a point where I've seen my life. I'm taking ownership of my life. I've given excuses enough. I can't do that no more. Nothing is big enough to hold me back. Not family, not even family. Family is important to me. But it's not more important than my life. If I die today, they bury me and move on. I'm not going to do that to myself. I want to leave a trail on this earth. 
I want to be useful to my generation yet unborn. I want to leave this world and people still remember me for what I did. The people that never met me will see the works that I'm doing and they won't be dead works. Equip yourself spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally, so you don't faint in the days of adversity. Adversity is inevitable. We're in the world of darkness. And that's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 16 verse 1. Arise and shine for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says darkness covers the earth. Ye gross darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you. So much so that Gentiles will come to your light. And kings will come to the brightness of your rising. And this light is the entrance of the word that giveth light and understanding unto the simple. For thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet. The word of God is not one verse. I'm not talking about one chapter. I'm talking about you getting the word until the light becomes so sh so bright that every shadow in your life is taken out. Equip yourself. Prepare your, yourself outside first and make it fit for yourself in the field. Then afterward, go build. I am talking about time and chance. This is your time and this is your chance to grow, to equip yourself. Take hold of every opportunity. Why the race is not to the sweet and bread is not to the wise. Favor is not a man of skill. Time and chance happens to everybody. Time, time. I used to tell people, once you get into this world, your time starts ticking. You have a number of days. The prayer is God, the number of my days fulfilled. That means I have a number attached to me. When that time is has come, I am going. You can't argue. The Bible says here it's inevitable. But what can you do in the grave? You need to take every day which is a gift and begin to tell yourself, I'm going to make this day worth it. Tell yourself, this day I'm going to make it count. Every day will count in my life. I'm not going to wake up quarreling with some man or with some woman. I'm not going to waste my life. In conflicts and confusion. And going to be doing one thing or the other. You come to my living room. I sit down. I can be watching something. I can be watching even a show. My laptop is in front of me. I'm listening to something. You know, something I'll just pause that. I'll listen to something somebody is saying on YouTube just to help myself. I look at the side. I see my guitar sometimes. I'll go and pick my guitar and just play a little bit. And I'll put it down. I relax again. I pick my Spanish notes. Sometimes I'll just say, let me just learn two or three words and just, you know, get it over with for today. I'm like that. I'm just everywhere making every day, every moment count. And I still have fun. I finish everything, I tell my daughter, let's go biking. So we pick our bikes and we just start biking on the road. We come back again, we go to the back and jump into the pool. So I'm playing, I'm working, but everything I'm doing is equipping me for what God wants me to do. A lot of you, you don't know what God wants you to do. And so everything, like I said, wherever you are today, be discerning to know why you are there. There is something God wants you to learn there. And do it heartily. Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart. I love Proverbs 24, the last four verses, verses 30 to the 1, 32, 33, and 34. I love it. I went by the field of the lazy man. And by the vineyard of the man that has no understanding. And there, there it was all overgrown with thorns. Now listen, every man has a field. I went by the field of a lazy man. Some people are plowing their field and some people are folding their hands and saying, I don't know. 
It's too hard. You don't understand. I wait by the field of the lazy man and by the vineyard of the man that does not have understanding. It was all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. When I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and I received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler and you, your need like an armed man. Proverbs 24, 30 to 34. I looked at the field of a lazy man and I received instruction. Anytime you see somebody that thinks they're not working for, use them as an example of someone you never want to be like. I looked at the field of a lazy man and it was all overgrown. He has a field. You have a field. There is a place God has given to you. You have an assignment. You have a field. But time and chance happens to them all. Take the best use, you know, of anything, everything that is around you. Make use of them. Make them useful. Make them count. Every day of your life counts. Add to yourself. Stop going around talking unproductively. Don't keep company of people that are not adding up. I'm not saying run away. I mean stay, you know, stay at a distance. Love them from far. Don't let them make your life, you know, what they want your life to be. Do not fulfill the expectations of slothful people people that will speak fear into your heart people that will tell you it's not possible you can't be around them time and chance happen so they all make the best use of everything around you and whatever your hands find to do do it heartily you all want to be a christian come to christ today because tomorrow is not promised Tomorrow is not promised. Accept the Lord Jesus into your heart as your Lord and, uh, and Savior. Don't stay there because once you do that, you see God's kingdom. You want to enter, begin to walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the loss of the flesh. Get baptized for everyone that believes that is baptized shall be saved. And anyone that does not shall be condemned. It's time for you to begin to, be, to, 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 to walk in the spirit, to pray in the spirit. Like I said before, you want to be part of the baptism in P-Form. It's July 17, but you need to begin to come every Sunday. To hear the word of God as we prepare people for that day. It's at 8502 Cambridge Street, Houston, Texas, 77054. Sunday, 11 a.m. Come as we prepare you for that baptism. So you can begin to speak in tongues as an initial evidence. I wanted to begin to walk as a full believer, laying hands on the sick, casting out demons, and not being fearful that you drank something, oh my God, oh my God, I need to put my hands in my throat, it will kill me. No, you will live, you will not die to declare the works of God in the land of the living. I am tired of hearing, oh my God, I couldn't come, you know, my body was you know, feeling funny. No, if you are supposed to be laying hands on the sick, you cannot give what you don't have. It means that God is equipping you enough to stay healthy and so everyone around you can be healthy. That's why we are called positive influence. We come here, we get positively influenced to go out to influence other people. That is your own portion. You're not yet born again today and you want to be born again. I need you to bow your head and say this prayer aloud after me. Father, I come to you today just as I am. I confess that I'm a sinner. Come into my heart, Lord. Be my Lord and Savior, Jesus. I will not go back to my old ways. 
keep me going in your part for your namesake. I denounce every works of darkness. I will follow you to the end. Give me a peace that passes all understanding. Today, I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said those prayers, please write us at pform.org or info at pform.org. If you want to also know more about pform, go to pform.org. If you want to be part of the baptism and you are in Houston, we're doing, you, we can't do virtual baptism. We're doing it in person. And so you will need day, day, day to be here in person. I am Reverend Olufolake Ike. I'm a senior pastor at p I'm also a licensed marriage and family therapist associated in Texas. If you want counseling or you know somebody that needs counseling, just go to pform.org slash therapy. And please and please and please do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Come be with us. Our services start at 11, but there is something we do. It's called One Hour with Olufolake Ike. It's like a motivational service that kind of sandwiches you know, the Bible with it so that you are equipped for what God is about to use you for. God has a mark upon you. You be upon your body the mark of Christ and let no man trouble you. And so I decree and I declare today that you will rise and you will shine in the mighty name of Jesus. You want to give to PFORM. It's a non-profit organization, so it's tax deductible. If you give to PFORM, you want to be part of this work, just give willingly and whatever God blesses you with or he tells you to give. The Bible says, give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed and shaken together, and running over shall men give onto your bosom. You can just text GIV give if you're in America or in Canada to eight five five nine two three one five seven seven eight five five nine two three one five seven seven if you're in Nigeria you know just go to our website and find out how you can give so you can just transfer money to a GT accounts God is the God that gives seed to the sower and it gives bread to the eater. He can never owe any man. When you give, when your cloud is full, your rain will surely fall. I pray that God in his infinite mercy will give you a 24-hour miracle. Even as you're listening to me, he will bless you and you will become a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed.